So we're going to be going over how you can use the PNC injection with type GraphQL. And we're going to be using an example that includes type ORM for this. Now before we get into the how of it, we're going to kind of look at a use case and why dependency injection is useful with type GraphQL and type ORM. So to start off, if you watch in my other videos, you'll notice that I always create type ORM entities like so. Uh, so you're looking at type ORM entity right here. This is just a database model. And the special part that I usually add is this extends base entity part. So when I extend from a base entity, what this allows me to do is use the class and call methods from it. So what I mean by that is if we look at an example of one of our resolvers here, I say book and I can call dot create dot save on it, or I can say book dot find or book dot delete. I have all these operations that I have access to. So this pattern is called the active record pattern. Um, just the way of creating the model like we did and calling the model like this. Uh, so there's other patterns that we can use in type form. The other one that we can use is called the data mapper approach or data mapper pattern. So the way we do that is instead of calling the class director directly, we can create a repository. So here I've created a book repository. So this is a separate class. It extends a repository which comes from type ORM. And we just say it's a book entity that we're dealing with here. Um, and so this repository, and we use the entity repository decorator as well. What this repository allows us to do is it's going to have all our create, our CRUD operations, and then we can add any custom methods that we want. So this find or create is a custom method that I added, um, and it just finds one or it creates one if it does not exist. Uh, so this, this allows you to put any kind of custom logic that you want for your uh, operations in this repository, and then you use it like so. So for example, if I want to use it here, I would say git custom repository, and then we're going to pass in the one that we want. So we're going to say book repo. And so I'm going to say book repo uh, is equal to getting that right there. And then I can say book repo dot find or book repo dot find or create. So this is just another way that we can call find or any of the database operations that we want to call. Um, so this is just a different approach. It does not affect the number of database calls that are actually uh, run. The performance is not different. It's just a different style of calling things. So you'll notice we're creating this custom repository to be able to do this with the data mapper pattern. Um, and it's kind of annoying to call this git custom repository every single time. And so that's when dependency injection comes in. Instead of creating an instance of the repository every time, in our resolvers or whenever you want to call it. Uh, in type GraphQL, you can use dependency injection. So there is a library called type ORM type DI extensions. And this allows us to use the inject repository decorator. So how it works is we specify the repository that we want to be initialized. And so basically all dependency injection does is it creates an instance of that uh, object for you. So we have the book repo is the type that we want to do it to create a uh, instance of it for us. And so we say book repo here. And when we add the inject repository directory, or sorry, directive, it's going to add it for us. So what this allows us to do is we can just say this.bookrepo.save um, or this book repo dot delete. All right, so that saves us from initializing the book repo in each resolver. Uh, we can now just do it up here. Now it's good to note uh, to get this set up, also you need to be calling the use container uh, from type ORM and from type GraphQL. So use container is something that you can get from type GraphQL um, and type and use container is also coming from type ORM. So basically they both have the same method called use container uh, that you have to get from this thing called type DI. So you need to install two extra things, type DI this actually creates the container. This is what the system that initializes the objects for us um, and the extension that we used. I closed that tab. The type ORM t type DI extension. So both of those is what you need to install uh, to get it working. Um, and then all you do is you wrap this container that you get from type DI 
with both Typeform and the uh, Type GraphQL use container. Now you're probably wondering why would I ever want to use data mapper uh, approach or this approach where it just feels like there's more boilerplate going on, right? Like uh, with the approach before, you don't have to use this use container thing uh, in your resolver over here. Um, you don't have to inject these repositories. Why would I ever use data mapper, right? Uh, and something that I haven't used a bunch in the past, but there are some valid reasons to use this. The first one is with this approach, you have a nice separation between your three uh, systems or your three, uh, I guess, I don't know, objects you would call it. Uh, so we have our models themselves, right? So this is our book model. And then we have our repositories where we put any kind of business logic um, or it doesn't have to be business logic, but logic around fetching database objects. So find or create, or maybe you have a join where you have to have write a custom query or anything. Basically, you put all the SQL related code in this repository. And then lastly, you put all your other stuff in the resolver. So your resolvers are simple. They just call your uh, repository methods. So it's a nice separation of concerns that you can put inside of uh, the repositories themselves. And then also it is easier to just test the repositories if you break it out like this. Uh, so you can test the individual methods easier. And then also, I haven't done this a lot myself, but people are saying it is easier to actually write tests when you have dependency injection and it's split up into repositories like this. It's very easy to mock the data to test your resolvers. And so what that allows you to do is your resolvers, um, you can mock out these calls right here. Uh, so your resolvers are not actually hitting the database at all. You mock that out and then you test your database calls separately. So you kind of split your tests up. So basically the whole idea is it's a nice separation of concerns with this data mapper approach. But again, it's just an approach. You don't have to take this one if you don't like it. You can also take the one that I was showing you before, the, uh, uh, the base entity approach, uh, the active record where you're doing that and you are calling it uh, like so. Uh, personally, I've used uh, I'm I've been using the Active Record one a lot, and I've just recently tried out the Data Mapper just to get a feel for it. Uh, I'm I'm opinionated in a lot of areas of software, but this is not one of them. Personally, uh, either one is I'm fine working with, and I don't really care either way. Um, in general, though, I would say if you're trying to decide which approach you want to use for your project, Data Mapper is something that. Uh, I would recommend for a larger project where you want that separation of concern and that really is helpful. And for a smaller project where that doesn't matter as much, maybe uh, take a look at the approach, the active record approach, just because it's a little bit simpler than setting all that stuff up. Anyway, that is how you do dependency injection and type GraphQL and uh, gives you a taste of the two different methods, active record um, and also data mapper. If you want to take that choice and go with this route, I've personally been trying it with CodePonder um, and it seems to be working pretty well doing this and injecting repositories like that.